So if you have any question, raise your hand or just ask the question for the voice channel right away. Uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions if I can. So the point that we left off is that how can we draw the image of an object for uh, within within a lens? So we had uh, we had two different rays that we had defined. One of the rays was very simple, uh, which was that passes through the optical center and goes, reflect goes undeflected. So there is no deflection whatsoever because we consider for thin lenses. And then the second ray can be slightly tricky. It can either have two different pathways for converging lenses. It can come parallel to the principal axis, then for, go through the principal focus on the other side, or it could come to the principal focus on the first side, fall onto the lens, and after passing through the lens, it can come parallel with the principal axis. Either of these two is acceptable. Similarly, for diverging lenses, uh, it can initially be parallel to the principal axis, and after passing through the diverging lens, it can appear to be leaving from the principal focus of the incoming side or it could aim towards the principal focus on the opposite side so as if it is aiming trying to reach towards this point but after passing to the diverging lens it becomes parallel with the principal axis so these are the two uh, alternate options that we have now for the lens figure uh, there are six different distinct positions that we talk about which are defined by uh, two which basically is two to the four uh, different uh, points. And there's a very nice symmetry to all of this discussion. So let me just try to find out a simulation for lenses. This will actually have three lion eyes. Okay. So this is the part. Uh, this is actually one of the very, uh, really nice simulations uh, that can prove to be very, very helpful for what I'm about to show you. Now, when I actually was discussing through the earlier class, I also told you that any image is described by three different information. We talk about what kind of image do we have? Why did I write those? Yeah, here, here they are. We talk about what kind of image do we have? We can either have virtual and upright, or we can have real and inverted. And we need to talk about where that image is located. And we also need to talk about what is the size of the image. Now, for the size of the image, we only have three different options because there is a certain term which is called linear magnification which i'm going to cover right now because we are getting into the idea of size and distance at the same time so linear magnification <laughs> this is just magnification linear magnification is basically defined uh, it's actually a measure how big the image is with respect to object so here are the sequence it is a measure of how big the image is with respect to the object. So one simple way to write the idea for linear magnification, let's say if I play, coin this term for M, or you could write any other variable. It doesn't actually have a very defined letter for its variable. So this can be written as object, no, not object, image. Image goes on the top. So image height divided by object height, which interestingly happens to be also equal, equal to image distance divided by object distance. Why is that? I'm gonna to talk to you about this in the two figures that we have from earlier class. So in optical cases, in lens figures, we always consider the distance, we always measure the distances from the optical center. That is sort of our zero point, for example, over in this figure, this is the optical center. And linear magnification gives us the ratio of the image height divided by the object height. So if the image is bigger than the object, then the linear magnification should be bigger than one. It means we have a magnified image. When the image is bigger, we call it magnified because it's bigger. And when the ratio is smaller than one, our image is somewhat smaller than the object, so which actually means the image has become smaller, 
we use the term diminished. Diminished actually means it is smaller in size. So that way the linear magnification ratio can be less than one. But it can never be minus one unless we consider the idea of uh, real images having positive distances and uh, virtual images having negative distances, which is not about a syllabus. So we're just gonna say length so that we always use uh, length. We are not going to bother with the plus or minus signs over here just to be within the limit of our syllabus uh, covering, but they can be plus or minus depending upon their type, which is just added information. So you can forget about that anyway. One thing that I need want you to show, see, have a look. Uh, let's say this is the optical center over here. I'm gonna label out two different triangles over here. I want you to look at those two triangles carefully. I'm labeling them by green. So this is the object. My, okay, it's just like that. Let me just name these triangles that I'm trying to talk about. Let's say the optical center is C, uh, tip of object is A, tip of the image is I, and this is our A point, and let's say this is our uh, B point. So particularly I have tried to label two different triangles. One is the OAC, this is on the left side, and the other one is CBI, this is on the right side. The reason I have, to, I have, I have labeled out these two triangles is to show you that Linear magnification for this image can be written as the ratio of IB divided by OA. Now, you should see that between these two triangles, these two sides, these triangles are both 90 degrees and these triangles are just opposite angles, which means these two triangles will be similar triangles. And in similar triangles, similar sides are of equal ratio. So IB divided by OA can be also written as CB divided by CA, which basically CB have a look, CB is basically this much distance, which is the distance of the image from the optical center. And CA happens to be this much distance, which is the distance of the object from the center. So both of these things can be equally applicable. And this actually brings a very interesting fact for our upcoming discussion, which is whenever image will be created in the case of an object, try to have a look. If object is closer to the, I mean, if the distance of the object and distance of the image are equal, then we're gonna have an equal size image, which means if both the object and the image are equidistant from the lens by some mechanism, by some measurement, by some special, special place on the principal axis, which are, we're gonna unveil uh, just in, uh, in a while. In that case, the object distance and image distance being equal would essentially mean object height and image height should also be equal. So equidistant things would be of equal size. The one that is further away will always be the bigger one because you can see it very well from this triangle, from these two triangles. The one that has that has a longer distance from the optical center will always be the bigger triangle. This is equally true for the divergent lens as well. The only difference is in the divergent lens, both of these triangles form on the same side. So if I try to show you that same triangle thing over here in this case, let's say this is our optical center, point C. This is our object O, uh, and this is our image, virtual image I. Let's give them the name of the bottom. So B and uh, and here is B. So now the two triangles that we're trying to cover, one is triangle O, A, C, and the other one is triangle I, B, C. And you should be seeing the same thing, that linear magnification over here can be given by I, B divided by O, A. So image height divided by object height, which should be definitely equals to C, B divided by C, A. Comes up the same exit ratio as we have derived in the earlier case. So same thing, IB by OA, CB by uh, CA. So in this case, the two triangles that we're seeing, one is, uh, I can actually choose a bit thicker line. Let's say one of the triangle is this one, uh, this one, and the other one, uh, let me label that with what, black maybe, because black is not used in this figure yet. Other one is this one. So these are the two triangles that we're trying to talk about. So where we have these two triangles, uh, these two angles as 90 degree, and this is a common angle for both of them. So we can also use the law for uh, for similar triangles. Point that I'm trying to make, further, further of the two things, object or image, whatever it is, the one that is further away from the optical center will always be the bigger one. This is, the, this is a very important information. This can help a lot in understanding a lot of the mechanisms that we're gonna discuss after a while. 
So three points. Once again, if I get back to the part where I left off, is that to describe an image, we need to define three different properties. Type of the image, position of the image, or location of the image, where that is, and size of the image, bigger, smaller, equal size, what? Based upon that, we can actually divide the entire principal axis of a certain lens into six different segments. Actually, I think it's five. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna label them. This is the principal axis. Here we have a lens. So this is a converging lens. Okay. So the defined point that we use to draw the optical figure for lenses are like this. Uh, one of the defined point is the, uh, is the optical center. The two other points are the two pr principal focus points on either sides, F and F. And the two other points are 2F, so double the principal focus length, and 2F. So 2F is simply double the focal length, which means this much is focal length. Focal length is represented by small f. I mean, the name of this dot is F. The name of this dot is 2F. The idea is from the optical center, this point is focal length distance away. And from the optical center, this point is twice the focal length away. That's the basic idea. That's how we name them. So you can see over here, we have actually divided the entire principal axis into multiple different segments. For example, let's say over here, we have infinite distance over here somewhere. Over here, we have infinite distance over here. So we are considering this whole line as an infinitely long line, maybe negative infinity and positive infinity, but let's assume this line is infinitely long. And we have multiple different options. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna try to place the object on one side of the uh, lens, and we're gonna try and find out what happens to the image as we slowly move the object uh, for, into different places. So the positions that we judge is number one, what if the object is at, at infinite distance? Now, whenever we say that the object is at infinite distance, what we actually mean is that the object is really far away from the lens compared to the dimensions involved with the lens. So let's say that the lens is the size of a, of a pizza. Let's say that lens is 12 inch. And in that case, we can consider the light rays are coming from the sun. So if we try to focus the light rays coming from the sun and the lens is, let's say 12 inches, uh, we can pretty well consider that the incoming light rays are actually practically parallel because sun is really far away. Although the rays from the sun, which is a star, actually goes out radially outwards, but whenever we consider uh, at a really far away distance, the two rays or the group of rays that actually fall onto the earth, which come from the sun, makes such a small angle that we can pretty much consider that the angle between those rays is practically zero, practically zero. Mathematically, we can definitely figure out a number, which is definitely true, but the physical significance of this number can be considered to be negligible. So whenever we say that we are considering the object to be at infinite distance, you don't actually have to consider it is to be physically at infinite distance. It simply means that we are considering objects, we are trying to uh, consider the image created creation of, of, the, of an object, which is really, really, really far away. Not, it doesn't have to be literally at infinite distance. So that's position number one. Position number two is outside 2F. So somewhere, outside 2f, anywhere outside 2f. So in other words, you can say between infinite distance and 2f, so, but in a measurable distance outside the 2f. So that is what we call position number two. Position number three is at 2f. If we place the object exactly at 2f, position number four is between f and 2f, anywhere in between. This is position number four. Position number five is at f. For some reason, CIA doesn't prefer you kids should know this. I'm going to show you in the syllabus that uh, they don't want, they, they feel that you don't need to understand that for reasons un understandable by my brain. That's too un in a word. Okay, no big deal. And the last segment is what if we place the object inside the uh, focal length or f distance, which means between the principal focus and with, in between the physical. Uh, existence of the lens, which is our position number six. So these are the six different positions we're going to consider our object as well. And we're going to see 
what happens to the light ray as we slowly move on back and forth. Now, before I get into the possible duration, this is the part that I want you to show, want you to understand and consider. For the lens, there are two magical positions. I'm using the word magical just to add a little bit of vibe. If you're bored, I'm sorry. Uh, one of them is the 2F point and the other one is the F point. The reason they're magical is for their own significances. 2F is such a point that if you place a point object, point object means a point light source. So it's a dot from which light is emerging out. If you place a point light source and allow the light rays to fall onto the lens out of a point light source, these light source are gonna bend in such a way that they're gonna meet on the other side exactly at 2F as well. Not my best figure, but I tried to pass it through this point. This is the significance of the 2F point. That's how lenses work. And you might wonder why. Uh, I am not gonna show you mathematically the mathematical proof that why does that happen, but lenses do behave that way. This is one of the uh, properties of the of lenses that 2F happens to be sort of a symmetry point. If you place an object at 2F location, you're gonna find out this image at 2F location. That's information number one. Information number two, if you place an object at principal focus, the light rays which are gonna come out of principal focus after passing through the lens, those light rays are gonna become parallel. So this should give you a little bit of idea of what is actually happening. Try to understand this thing. If we have an object at the 2F position, the, so if we have a point object over here, the image of this point object is gonna be created right over here, okay? No big deal. Whenever we're gonna to start to move the object closer from the 2F towards the F position, try to understand. So let's say if I move the object right over here, then the rays, light rays, which are gonna fall onto the, onto the lens are gonna be more divergent. Now, I want all of you to understand this thing very, very clearly. So let me just draw a different, a different uh, geometry figure so that it can actually, I can actually make sense with you what I mean. Let's say this is a base of a triangle and we're gonna try to draw isosceles triangle, but all the vertices will be on the on this line. So if I have a isosceles triangle of this much size, isosceles. So yes, or you can I can have an isosceles triangle of this much size with the same amount of base angle. I can have an isosceles triangle of this much size, so on and so forth. What I want you to see, or what you want to understand. The closer the vertex approaches towards the base, the bigger this vertex angle become. Do all of you see that? Or can you appreciate this geometric behavior? That the closer you get towards the base for an isosceles triangle, the vertex angle, inside angle of the, at the vertex, that slowly becomes bigger. Do you understand this part? Yes, sir. Everyone? Yes, sir. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm, by using the word base, I'm just meaning the uh, single length of line, but uh, which would, in, which in this case for this figure would mean actually the aperture line of the lens on which the light rays are gonna fall. Asif, Bucho. Yes, sir. Okay. So, agency can hold this. Agency bujana can hold share com. Any converging lens, it has a certain amount of convergent power. It has a certain amount of converging power. Converging power. Converging power means how much can it actually cause a group of light rays to bend closer, or how much can a divergent lens can actually make a group of light rays to spread out away from each other? How much is that? That capability is defined by a certain unit, which is called diopter. Diopter is not in our syllabus, so I'm not going to get into that. Into that. But one easy way that I can make sense with you to have a bit of an idea for the power of a lens that, well, how do we define the power of a lens? I mean, which lens is more powerful? Is basically by comparing how much bending does a lens can do. If a lens can do more bending, we're gonna call it more powerful. If, it, if a lens can do less bending, we're gonna call it less powerful. So let me give you some figurative drawing and so let's see if you can make sense of it. Let's say we, ha we have uh, two lenses over here, two converging lenses over here, thin converging lenses over here, but they have different focal lengths. Why do they become triangles? Yes, 
Okay, let's say one of the lens, whenever parallel light rays fall onto this lens, let's say this light rays merge over here, over here, so bam. How do I disable that, Asif? So you have to click on the menu. Eh? The three, you, have, you have to click in the menu, the three red line, yes. Again, take it. Into shape, yes, sir. into shape, uh, disable button. Into shape, second one. Of course, it will go Yes, sir. You don't want to have a rectangle like a rectangle, right? Yes, sir, I have a rectangle. Okay. Oh. Thank you, thank you. I learned a new thing. So yeah, so if I need my things to convert into shape, for example, if I'm trying to draw a good circle, I'm gonna turn that on. If I'm not, then I'm gonna turn it off. Tika? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. That was really helpful. Been looking for the tip for a while, quite a while, to be honest. Thank you. So let's say we have these two lenses. So for, for the top lens, the parallel rays fall in and eventually they meet through over here and eventually they pass to this point. Let's say, this, so this much is the focal length for this lens. Let's say the lower one, we are also sending some, a group of parallel rays over here. So let me once again draw five, five of these. And let's say this one has a much smaller focal length. So let's say these light rays meet far too closer. Now, between these two lens, which one do you think is more powerful? The top one Second or the bottom one? one? The bottom one. I'd say the bottom one because the bottom one can add more convergence to the light rays, which is causing the light rays to meet at a much smaller distance from the lens. So this actually gives us a bit of an idea about the comparison that the closer the principal focus is from the optical center, I mean, the smaller the focal length of the lens is, we're going to define that lens to be more powerful. It basically means that lens can add more convergence if it's a converging lens or it can add more divergence if it's a divergent lens to the to a group of parallel incoming rays now point to be understood that this actually goes on to mean that every lens has a certain amount of capability for how much converging can they add to a group of incoming light rays which means if a group of light rays are not convergent let's say if they are divergent a converging lens would make them less convergent. So it will basically try to make them converging, but to what limit the a converging lens can convert a group of divergent lens into a converging group of rays, there is a physical limit for this. So this is the part that I want you to understand. Have a look. Uh, let me just show you this in the figure. This is gonna make sense, I hope. Where is that animation? Here you are. So, okay. So, can I have multiple rays? Can I have all the rays over here? But the moment I bring it onto the principal axis, the rays actually vanish. Which is good for the animation, but well, in this figure, I cannot even change the size of the object but it's also pretty much the same thing hold up just a second pull up on
okay i'm just gonna draw in my own figure to make my point so what i'm trying to tell you over here is that if you try to visualize this if we have a point object not a vb object so if you have a point object right over here whenever the light rays coming from the 2f point fall onto the lens and eventually go out on this lens you have a certain bit of angle over here if a group of if you slowly start to bring the point closer I and mean, let's say we, we are going to place them in the exit same point so let's say this is a lens and we have this object and all of these light rays are going to fall on the exact same point on the lens body but as you're slowly going to bring it closer the incoming light rays are going to become more and more divergent which means the converging lens is going to be able to make them convergent by less and less because they are initially divergent to begin with and you should see that principal focus is sort of the point at which and this is the point from which whenever light rays come out of the principal focus falls onto the lens and leave out of the lens these output rays are actually becoming parallel what does this tell you this actually goes to, this actually tells you that as the image as, as the as the point object which was uh, uh, which is something that i began began with as the point object travels from 2f to f distance this angle slowly gets bigger this angle slowly gets bigger 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 and these light rays coming out becomes less convergent less convergent which means that they are crossing point meet further away from, from the 2f point so they, that, that crossing point slowly starts to move really really far away and whenever the object is placed exactly at the f point the output rays become parallel now the, the property of parallel lines is that they don't actually physically ever cross which means hypothetically you can say that their actual physical crossing point might be at the infinite distance so between the switch position from 2f to f i mean when the object is moved from the 2f position towards f position the image position moves from 2f to outwards this is how it works and the opposite also works opposite of the also works means that if we consider that when the object was actually being brought in from the infinite position uh, let's say the object was at infinite position and we are slowly bringing the object closer so we are slowly bringing the physical object closer so when the object is at infinite distance the incoming rays could be somewhat considered to be nearly parallel to each other now you might feel like why is a point object shouldn't there be some angle there would be some angle but we are considering that angle to be small because i mean consider two different lines drawn at your position from infinite distance and it's very difficult for those two lines not to be just to be parallel so if you if we place the object at infinite distance the most likely crossing point is through the principal focus so this is basically what you're going to see uh, uh, right after a bit that when object is going to be placed at infinite distance image will be produced at the principal focus on the right side as you slowly start to bring the object closer the image is slowly going to get further out because when your object is going to get closer, yes, your image is going to go out. That's because the lens can only add a fixed amount of converging of convergence into a group of incoming rays. So, as you slowly bring the object further, to your uh, so, so as you slowly bring the object closer from the infinite distance, the image is slowly going to go out. So, as the object is going to travel from infinite distance up to two f, for this much movement of the object position, image is going to move this much position and for this much movement of the object image is gonna move this much away so 2f is sort of your sweet spot this is sort of the point at which uh, your object and image are equidistant and you have equal size and they are both equally e equal in uh, in size yeah and they're equidistant i'm saying the same things multiple times but before and after that we have a swap so when the object is outside 2f your image is closer than 2f within 2f i can place it that way which means for positions where the object is placed outside 2f anywhere uh, from infinite distance or uh, or between uh, between uh, infinite distance and uh, 2f or which means outside 2f for all the positions your object is outside 2f your image would be located between f and 2f it means image would be definitely smaller because the image is closer and the object is further away and whenever you we are going to place the object between 2f and f then object is going to be closer and the image is going to be further away which means the image is going to definitely going to be magnified or it's going to be bigger in size and then we have a discussion a little bit of discussion for what happens for number five and number six which i am going to show you after i show you the figures so let's go ahead and try to see observe the figures then i'm going to show you the animation as well 
I can find out some figure I believe uh, this one how big is this uh, solution by nine zero two pretty good pretty good is it pretty good look pretty good why this is supposed to be a good image yeah it is a good image okay let me just show you this image then I'm gonna uh, show you in the animation so have a look the first one position that we have is u equals to uh, infinite. In this case, u is used as the object distance. There is a uh, small bit of mathematics that can go around in the lens cases, which could be uh, included for your syllabus. But if you slowly go uh, higher uh, up in your uh, study, and eventually if you want to learn about the how the telescopes are designed or optical devices like microscopes are designed, uh, there are actually a whole lot of geometric and mathematical equations which can mesmerize with your brain. But we are not dealing with mathematical equations, so let's forget about the u position. Let's try to figure out the object and try to understand the significance of these columns. Type of image, image distance, and what kind of uses do we have? And the position will be very easily visible over here. So image distance is over here, and uh, type of image actually gives us the size here as well. I mean, the third property is also giving us the size. So have a look, whenever the object is placed at infinite distance, let's say it's a really large image. So we are constant that the object in this case is at infinite distance standing on top of the principal axis. So it's infinitely big. So some rays are coming from this tape and eventually as they're falling onto the lens, these two rays are actually becoming parallel. So for this case, whenever the parallel rays are passing through, they are gonna eventually cut off at the principal focus point, beneath the principal focus point. So this is something that we call auxiliary focus. The principal focus at the on the principal axis is what we call the principal focus, and any point on a focal plane is sometimes used as uh, an auxiliary focus, or you can also forget about this point. This is just another point underneath the principal focus, which is which also perfectly makes sense. So that's what we are getting. getting. So in this case, the image is real; it is inverted, and obviously the image is definitely significantly smaller. So they use the term diminished. Sometimes the examiners prefer the term highly diminished or uh, uh, really diminished. So like really, really small compared to the size of the object. And the, for the position, V equals to F, which means uh, the image was formed on the opposite side of the object position. And it was at, at location at F distance away from the optical center. So V equals to F. What kind of uses do we have for this? We use this kind of setup for object of lens and a telescope. So Every telescope that we use to focus uh, to see some distant galaxies or stars in the sky, we these objects are considered to be really far away. To be able to see these objects at a really far away distance, the incoming rays can be considered to be almost parallel. So the way we actually see them fr from Earth is that we use a certain lens and produce a small image over here. And then by taking a high resolution image of this small image, which is actually not small, we can look deeper into the whole uh, whole thing of the image uh, of the actual view. So, and how big this image is going to be, or we can use this as as uh, as uh, as an object object for a second lens, and we can use multiple lenses in pair. So, uh, the image produced by one lens is going to work as the object for the second lens, and there can be multiple of these stages by using multiple different lenses. We can actually have a whole lot of a complicated optical diagram but which ultimately gives us a really nice and good image to deal with so that's used for a telescope then the next question u is bigger than 2f uh, this actually goes uh, actually in, in description we use the term that object is placed outside 2f distance so here is a 2f point object is placed right over here and as we have drawn this figure, you can see that in this case the rays are coming by one ray is passing through the principal focus and the other ray is simply passing through the optical center and they're meeting at a point right over here, which happens to be in between F and 2F. So when the object is placed outside 2F, 
your image is going to be produced in between f and 2f we use this mechanism in camera and also in human eye this is basically how our human eye works and all the images that we see of physical objects in front of us this is the exact mechanism by which image is produced in our eyes and the retina actually receives an inverted image on the retina so every physical objects image that we see they go through the optical lens of our eye actually get through a series of refractive medium we have the cornea we have the aqueous humor then we have the lens then we have the vitreous humor so going through all of this refractive medium they eventually fall onto the retina and that actually produces an upside down image as these images are processed in our brain somehow uh, within our nervous system within our brain the images are reflipped and as a result we can actually sense the objects to be an object to be in uh, in the perfect orientation that it is so this is a very important thing cameras also work in the exact same way uh, in cameras the film uh, is placed right over here and this whole thing is kept within a light tight box light tight box means it's a black box where no light can enter other than the light that you want to uh, come through to your uh, film so this is the place where we can place the film and if it's a digital camera we place a photo sensitive uh, the thing which is sometimes called a cmos sensor uh, or there can be more advanced sensors right now cmos is the most advanced that i can name uh, the it's actually a plate which can detect individual colored electromagnetic waves or photons and give a certain amount of uh, voltage output depending upon that which can be recorded by some physical detectors that's how digital uh, uh, cameras work so basically there is a sort of like an uh, erasable there is an there's a bit of an erasable uh, how can i put it? erasable film so which you can use over and over again and extract the data out of it and just move on forward so that's for that and if you place the object exactly at u equals 2f point that is a sweet spot the object is produced perfectly at 2f as well which gives us an perfectly equal image so you can see inverted real obviously same size unique and v equals to 2f opposite side of the lens what are the uses of this one we use it for photocopier making same sized copy so whenever we use photocopy machines and if you're doing a hundred percent image we use this we can use this mechanism uh to directly make a photocopy out of objects because uh we are making the same size image so you we need actual light to pass through the object and eventually reach up to the other side this can be used current photocopiers actually use a much be a much higher much uh superior technology they actually undergo they go through the scan digitalize the whole thing and then feed it to the uh laser uh, of the photocopy machine which actually charges up the drum to a very small pixel depth and through that you can have a very crisp or very jog jog print or the way we put it in bangla the third position object is placed between f and 2f position and that actually makes the rays a little bit divergent so what you should see that when the object was at infinite distance image was created at f object getting closer so it is just outside 2f image has moved out away from the f position is now at between f and 2f Object is at 2f, image is also at, at 2f. The moment the object enters beyond 2f, image starts to go out of 2f. So as we are bringing the object closer, the image is slowly getting further away. That's a very basic idea. And then what happens at this position that when object is at f distance, I mean, if we place the object exactly at principal focus point, which brings us to a very weird situation, which is the light rays after passing through the lens actually become parallel. Now, parallel light rays are not supposed to be crossing each other. Parallel light rays should not cross each other. Why should they cross? So, we cannot actually say physically there will be an image. But if we place our eyes over here, this object is gonna come look as if it's to be to be very blurred, like super blurred. Uh, and because parallels are not supposed to cut anywhere, but if we actually keep our eyes over here, we can still receive the light rays. So there is a certain way that you can say that because our eyes is gonna, are, is gonna perceive that the light rays are coming in this direction, which are parallel to each other, our brain can decipher these incoming light rays for an object as if this thing is actually located at an infinite distance. So this is basically this, 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 this position 
It's just the other way around view of position number one. In position number one, you can see that when the object was located at infinite distance, image was created at f. Whereas over here, if the object is placed at f position, image is going out on the infinite distance. And it's becoming a virtual image because the light rays are actually not crossing. So it's an upright virtual magnified image. Image at infinity, same to the other lens. We use it to produce a parallel beam of light. Example, a spotlight. Sometimes this mechanism is also used for uh, to within a light box, which I showed you in, in, in last class. That light box also uses uh, this mechanism to produce a parallel beam of light, which we can pick off by using small slits to whether how many how many light rays do you want to utilize for our experiment. And then the last one that if we place the object in, inside the principal focus point, so if we place the object really close to the lens so that the low position is less than F, then the output rays are gonna become divergent. So this is something that I can actually show you over in the animation maybe a bit better. So yeah, you can see over here, I can have a look that F over here is considered to be four units. So I cannot actually zoom, can I zoom this a little bit? And uh, okay, can you kids actually read this letter four on the horizontal axis? I mean, zero, two, four, can you read these letters? Yes, sir. Okay. So these are visible, beautiful. So these are two, two these are the uh, lengths over here. So they have just gone for a very basic uh, Cartesian coordinate system. So towards right positive lens, upward positive lens. So that's why they have given negative values on the left side, negative values on the left side. But we uh, we can consider the position for the timing, not so important. So in this case, f equals to four, I can actually change this value. Uh, I mean, there are ways I believe this value can be changed. Can this be changed? Maybe this can be changed. I don't know how this can be changed. Oh, I can just drag this thing to make it change. Oh works so let's say for the for, for the simple idea of f equals to four so for the lens that we have over here whenever we f equals to four this is our f distance and eight is our two f distance have a look whenever i'm placing the object really far away so i cannot make it this go much more more further away right than this or maybe i can write over here why can't i change values I believe there is a way to change these values, but I, 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 I don't want to uh, spend time to figure that out. The, what I'm trying to show you, uh, if the object is placed really far out, then the image is going to be pretty close. You should see that as I'm slowly bringing the object closer, this cross point is slowly moving away diagonally. Diagonally because this the crossing point of the uh, image location will be always on this line. The line that is uh, coming from the tip of the object, going to the optical center and going straight line. So, the image will always be formed on this line. So as I slowly bring this line closer, you can see that the image is slowly getting further away and it, they perfectly match each, each other's size whenever I place the object at eight distance. So at eight distance, you have the image at eight distance. The moment I bring in further, the image is going out really further out. So if I still want to keep the image in, I cannot anymore because then the uh, thing is going out, but you can still see over here, how far is the image. So for a distance of object is equal to 6.12, the distance of the image is 11.55. So if I still keep it bringing up closer, 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 the image is gonna get even further, 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 and further, and really, really, really further, and really further out. You can see it's getting really further. And the moment I place the object exit at four, the distance of the image over here is shown to be minus 1252.22. I believe this is the maximum number this animation or this simulation can handle. This is why it is showing as a maximum number, but practically this is supposed to be parallel. So this, this distance of the image is supposed to be infinite. So uh, this system or this simulation has its maximum values of the axis systems at minus uh, 1252.22. That's why this is the number that they are showing. And then comes the interesting part. That is, if we place the object inside the F, then what happens? These two rays do not remain parallel anymore. They become divergent because the incoming rays become so much spread out, which I can show you in this figure a little bit. It means, uh, where was that? Yes. If we place the object inside the principal focus, the incident ray on the lens are initially so much, it's so damn divergent that the lens actually cannot make them con convergent. Rather, it simply 
reduces the diverging amount, which means they become less divergent. They don't become convergent anymore. The last point for convergence was up till they reached principal focus. A to go mode object thakle, ultimately the output regular convergent hobby. The moment the object is placed at F, the output rays become parallel. Beyond that point, the rays would not even be parallel. They will simply become more spread out or they would be, they would still be divergent, but less divergent than before. So this is what is happening. The moment we bring the object closer, so let's say right over here, then we can have a figure like this. So one ray is going through here. This is the optical center line. And the ray is passing through the principal focus. And so coming parallel to the uh, principal axis and then going to the principal focus. These two light rays are uh, divergent compared to each other. So if we extend them backwards, we're going to get this cross point. So this is, can be our one of the rays or the alternate version. One ray that can be observed to be coming off from this point. So this line is actually, if we extend this backwards, this is going to go through this minus four, minus four point. So this point was coming apparently through this line and eventually it becomes horizontal. So if I extend this backwards, we're also going to get this point. For your syllabus, we usually go for these two lines, which uh, this uh, image actually shows us over here. So if you have a look over at this figure, this is what I'm talking about. So one becomes par parallel and goes to the principal focus. One ray goes to the optical center. And after passing the lens, they become divergent. If we extend them backwards, we get an upright and virtual image, which is definitely magnified and it is on the same side of the object and this is the key working mechanism for magnifying glasses one thing you should understand magnifying glasses help us to small see small objects with small letters how by seeing the object in a bigger size why should that work we should understand that in a magnifying glass whatever we see we see it in the same orientation which means our observed image the bigger image that we're seeing object doesn't physically get big it just looks big so we are actually not seeing the true object. We are actually seeing an image of the object, which has to be bigger in size and also should be in the same orientation as the object. So image to be upright has to be virtual. So virtual and upright are, are paired property. This is basically why magnifying, whenever you use, you use magnifying glass, the image is always seen physically further away from where the object is actually. So if we have a newspaper and you put a magnifying glass on top of it, which actually gives you a larger view, if you look over it and try to shake your head left and right, you will see that the image that you're seeing will physically appear to be deeper or further away from the lens than the actual physical object of the newspaper. You can actually feel that. Uh, I do not have the physical equipment to show this to you right now, but if you were in a physical class, I would have definitely showed this uh, effect to you. Okay, I'll take, I'm gonna take a small break. Uh, for those of you who are still waiting to say Margaret Pierre, you can say, say it. We're gonna be back in about eight minutes, I believe. The positioning group is clearly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome. Then we're gonna see some specific uh, uh, application of the optics, especially for two devices. One is a camera. The other one is for human eye, and we're going to discuss some about the problems regarding what we mean by focusing, and how eyes can have problem, and what are the problem, how can we uh, address those problems. One of the key way to see a clear image is to produce the image exactly at the detector. For example, for a camera, that detector is the uh, do we have cameras over here no we have to the image formation <clears throat> so not this one. We have the optics of human eye. So human eye is going to be work pretty well. Okay. Uh, and we're going to use this one for the human eye. I'll just find out if we can have any camera simulation. Okay.
Okay, never mind. This is for the professionals. This is just a PDF. Wow. Okay, let's see. Um. Okay, this can actually prove a lot helpful. <clears throat> I'm gonna explain what I'm trying to uh, get at. Acha, never mind. I, I'd rather use this thing. This is not the same thing that we were doing. Okay, so this is what happens for a divergent image, divergent, uh, uh, sorry, a divergent lens. In this case, I have bring the, uh, I just shift. I just did a shift of the principal focus points. What the way we uh, the divergent lens works that the image will be always be somewhat smaller and on the same side of the object, and the image will be always divergent. You can see one ray coming parallel uh, to the principal axis goes out, and one ray that comes to the principal uh, to the optical center goes straight. If we extend them backwards, you find out the image position. So for divergent lens images, this image will always be somewhat smaller and closer to the lens compared to the object, which is obviously true because smaller images, <coughs> smaller images closer to the lens compared to the object. We discussed that earlier. Now, what I want you to understand, let me just draw it over here because I cannot find out a suitable figure. Very basic camera optics. Um.
Okay, yeah, I was going for this this image. I was looking for this one. Let's pick that up and be helpful for the next discussion. So this is a very simplified view for how a camera looks like, uh, but this is a uh, sort of a bit detailed view for what we are going to need for our purpose. What I need you to all see that this is an, there is an object over here, which is placed in front of the camera and the camera lens is over here shown as a single uh, convergent lens for the sake of simplicity. Usually there are a lot of lenses which you just saw on the Google search, but it is usually placed in a rail mechanism. So this teeth that you can see is a sort of a threaded rail mechanism by rotating the arm which exists on the top we can actually move the position of the lens and the film is usually placed inside the box in a fixed position now what you need to understand <coughs> for any camera So any lens, this much is our image distance and this much would be our object distance. Now, important part is to produce a clear image or the word you use, a focused image, we need to produce the image exactly on the film, which means the crossing of the two light rays, which gives us the real image, must be located right over here. And what you just saw uh, in the earlier discussion that whenever the object gets closer to the lens, the image tends to move further away. So, uh, and if the object is further away from the lens, then the image actually gets closer. This brings us to the idea that, let's say we have this camera right over here. If the object is right over here, let's say for this position, we're gonna get a focused image. How can we get the focused image? Pretty simple. We can draw a, a piece of light ray that passes through the lens, let's say through this point, and it's gonna eventually meet on one point over here, but I don't know where that point is. Till I draw another ray, starting from this tip of the flower through the optical center, which is a midpoint. And if I draw a perfect straight line in this orientation with a ruler, this is gonna actually go over here and eventually fall on a specific point on the film. If the position of this lens is properly arranged, then this ray, which was parallel coming to the principal axis, should also meet on this exact same point on the film as well, which would essentially define, this is our focal point for the lens. So this is what we mean by actual focusing, so that the image is produced exactly on the film, which is definitely gonna be somewhat smaller, which eventually we can uh, uh, magnify by the uh, process of optical imaging later on in the process of development and printing. Now, the point that I'm trying to discuss, what if we are trying to focus another object which is not exactly at this distance? Let's say if we take this flower further out. So if this flower was existing right over here, how? what should we do <coughs> to focus the image on this position? Now, the part that I want you to understand. Well, if, I, if the flower is further out, then the DO or the object distance should become bigger, which means DI should become smaller. A part of Buxuzukina. That the, if the image distance, if the object distance is bigger compared to earlier case, the image distance should be smaller compared to earlier case. Now, the, the for the case of the lens, for the for the case of the camera, the film is not movable. We cannot move the film. The film is in a fixed position right over here inside the box. What we can move is the lens. 
uh, you might also wonder, well, we could actually move the person holding this camera and move them backwards or move them forward. Well, that's definitely an option, but that's definitely not the most uh, convenient option because we would like to take a picture from our position for different distance objects. So some objects might be close, you might be taking a picture of a flower, some objects might be further, you might be taking a picture of a sunset, you might be taking pictures of, uh, of, of the clouds. So <clears throat> depending upon what you want to uh, take a picture of, your aimed object can be at different distances from the lens. But here's the deal. The further object is, the smaller the distance of the object is going to be. So if we bring the object further out from the original position, we have to make the DI smaller. But because the film cannot move, so all that it remains is that we have to move the lens inside the camera. Or you can write, uh, if the question actually asks, you can write that. Uh, we have to move the lens closer to the film or we have to move the lens uh, towards the right for the given figure, or we have to bring in the lens in, in, into the lens. So that is going to give you a smaller DI because, for example, let's say for the object to be over here, if we place the lens right over here, that is going to give us a bigger DI, but definitely a small, sorry, a bigger DO or, or distance of the object. And the distance of the image can be smaller. And this can work. The reason this can work, because here's the part that I want you to understand. The reason this works is because you should see that when the object position is moved from infinite through 2f, have a look at this part. When the object distance is from infinite distance up to 2f distance, the image was produced within only this much distance. So what happens in a camera, let's say the film is always placed right over here. And the lens is actually moved back and forth so that this effective distance can be controlled. So that whatever the object that we're trying to image, uh, take the image for, that object's image will be always, can be always be placed focused onto our uh, film. And that is how a camera works. So important point, if the object is really far away, <clears throat> then the lens should be pushed closer to the film. If the object is brought closer, then the lens should be slowly moved further away from the film so that the image distance can get bigger. This is actually how uh, lenses work. For manual lenses, this has to be done physically by rotating the, uh, rotating the grip, sorry, grip, uh, grip circles. I, I forgot the name of these things. That are both the uh, see uh, this, uh, this uh, round stuffs, uh, what do they call? I don't know what they're what they called. So these gripped uh, arms, which, which are circular uh, mechanisms, you can rotate them and eventually position the camera lens back and, and backward or forward, that is gonna give you a focused image. And uh, if you're trying to take pictures of really close objects, then the uh, camera lens has to be pushed really far out so that we can get a focused image. And this is how the camera lens works by changing the position of the lens. In the case of an eye, this system is more constrained. What happens in an eye? Within an eye, uh, let me just find out a figure for a human eye. Okay, not this eye. Yes, this side. <clears throat> so for the case of an eye, uh, if I take this uh, image of an eye, a pretty simple image, the position of the lens and the position of the, uh, of the retina, which is our light sensitive component of our human body, this distance is fixed. So we cannot change this distance. So how does the eye is capable to see objects at different distance clearly? Using the ciliary muscles and the suspensory ligaments, which actually hold the lens in its position, the human eye lens can be made into a thinner lens by pulling it outwards or by pushing it around, it can be made into a thicker lens. So how much pulling or how much pushing should be done <coughs> or to control the focal length of the human eye lens, that is a capability that we generate within our brain, within our autonomous brain system when we are young. 
So we are just born, we are trying to look at different part of the world, our eye, our ciliary muscles and suspensory ligaments tries all the combinations for certain combinations, it, 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 it is able to see an object clearly, the brain then stores that information that fine, this, make this much uh, focus works. So as we slowly grow older, our eye automatically adjusts itself <clears throat> to that amount of uh, focal thickness of the eye lenses so that we don't actually physically have to do that math and actually readjust our eye lens to that thing. Unless we develop some problem. What are those problems? Here's the deal. So uh, if I go to this uh, simulation, this one, no, this one, yes. <laughs> so I would like to put it in 100%. So let's say this is our retina, this is the lens. So in this case, this much distance would be fixed. And this is the anatomy. So let's put a little bit of uh, anatomy over here, maybe right like that. <clears throat> so normal vision, it means if you if we have a uh, Okay, uh, this is what we call a norm normal eye. For example, a not the closest distance a normal eye can see without stressing the eye is about 25 centimeter. So a healthy eye can see objects clearly from 25 centimeter away all the way up to infinite distance. So any object placed in between the object can see it clearly. Now, one thing that you need to understand clear carefully there's a difference between seeing an object clearly and the seeing the object seeing and seeing the object zoomed. Seeing an object clearly does not mean being able to read really small letters which are really far away. Seeing an object clearly means not seeing it blurred. There's a difference between a clear image and a blurred image. For example, uh, for those of you who have spectacles, you know what a blurred image looks like. For those of you who do not have a spectacles, very easy. If you just put out, pull out your, your finger in front of your eye, any finger, and look at the finger, and while looking at the finger, try to see with your surrounding vision, the wall behind it. You'll see that the wall does not look as crisp or as normal as it looks. That's what we mean by blurred vision. So seeing something clear actually means that we should be able to produce the object's image exactly on the retina. So this is how a normal eye should look. This is a near point. And whenever the object is really far away, the optical lens actually, uh, how do I, when the, when the object is really far away, the eye makes the lens thinner. So I, if I just get rid of the anatomy, so you should see this, do you, can you see this uh, small lens circle? Can, is this visible to you? This slightly yeah. bluish uh, elliptical lens. So you see when the object is really far away, so let's say the object is really far away, then the focus is changed automatically so that we can still see the object uh, uh, that is comfortable for us to see. Can I, why can I not take the object really far away? Okay, these are the two for our closest and the far position that we have. Problems that happens, one is the near-sighted problem, the other one is the far-sighted problem. Near-sighted eyes can see close objects pretty well, but cannot see objects which are at far, which means there is a certain maximum distance till which the near-sighted eye can see clearly, but Beyond a certain far distance, for example, it's a one meter, two meter. But choker cast theke ek meter, but two meter pon to porishkar dekbe. They are near sighted eyes, but ek dure kono kichhu dekte shay blood dekbe, which can happen if we have an eye that looks like this. So, for example, uh, whenever the object is pretty close, <coughs> our focus is for the near object. It it sees it clearly, and when the object is over here, I mean, then the uh, 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 folk. I actually don't know how to use this animation. Okay. So whenever the object is at this position for the, the object, the eye can still manage to see it clearly. And for objects which are even closer, the eye can still see it clearly by managing the lens of the eye. So if you bring it even closer, the eye can still able to merge the light rays perfectly on the retina. But the moment the object so let's say this is the maximum distance the eye, the uh, short-sighted eye can see. 
any object placed outside this location, so let's say far from this position, they're gonna have a crossing in front of the retina. As a result, the cross point is not gonna be perfectly on the retina and the obscene object is gonna become blurred. So how can we uh, correct this problem? We correct this problem by placing a divergent lens right over here, which in this, in this figure, in this animation is not offered, is not offering the solution, but I can see you some figure which should give you the idea of what is happening. I know it's 7.30 and many of you have class. I'm gonna try to finish it quick. <clears throat> yeah. So this is what we call the problem. So this is what happens for myopia. The lens is too strong or the eye is too long. Either of this can happen. And for hypermetropia, which is the long set problem, the lens is too weak or the eye is too short. So that's why the light rays are meeting behind the eye. For myopia or short-sighted problem, we have to use a concave lens so that the lights are diverged before they enter into the eye. For example, the figure, a figure that looks like this. So have a look what is happening. It might be a bit difficult for you to make sense because all the rays are of the same color. Can we find a figure where the rays are of different color? No.